Basim Ben and his Donkey by Edwin Waugh Chapter 6 Three blithe lads that lay long night you wouldn't have found in Christendom. Burns After the donkey had upset the old woman at the end of the lane and had given the farmer's dog a taste of his heels sending it howling home again with its tail between its legs and a great pain in the jaw it is ten to one that it would have got clear out of the hands of its enemies and found its way home into the hills, but for Rip Rap. The moment Rip saw the dog seize Enoch in the farmyard, he leaped over the nearest hedge and laid himself down upon his face. But as soon as Dimple and the dog had swept by the hedge behind which he lay hid, he sprang to his feet and picking up the piece of beef which he dropped into the gutter. He ran for his life, over hedge and ditch, till he came out at a field gate, which opened upon the high road, low down in the village. Here he was safe, and he turned up the road and went towards the old Tobes yard, trying to look as innocent as possible. But before he had gone many yards, he heard the clatter of Dimple's feet coming down the brow, in the dark, in full canter. He was just in time to stop it. Flinging the beef upon the edge, he rushed from one side of the road to the other, shouting and swinging his arms, till he ran the jackass into a corner, where he caught it by the bridle. Come out, man, said Rip. The lads to go with me. Then, popping the beef into one of the panniers, he led the frightened animal back up the brow to the door of the old alehouse. Here he was joined by Twitchell, who had lain down in an old cart at the house end, peeping out now and then to see how things went on. In a few minutes, Enoch came running down the road, as we have seen in the last chapter. The three schemed together, until they got Dimple safely stabled in the custody of the landlord. They got the half-crown for it too, and the rogues rejoiced at the success of their frolic after so many mischances, though they had not the slightest idea how it was to end. As for Ben, why, he had set the old thing a-going himself, and he must abide by it, for they had made up their minds, as Enoch said, to set thou lad a bit of a craddy. By this time it had got as dark as it was likely to be on that cloudless summer night, the village mothers had long since called in their children from play. Lights glimmered here and there in cottage windows, but quietness was stealing over the tired workmen's humble household. The wild birds had gone to roost in their green chambers, and all the little hamlet was still, except at the corner of the lane, where the donkey had upset old Molly. A few neighbours were gathered there, gabbling and staring down the road after the jackass. They had picked up the old woman and found that she was a good deal more frightened than hurt. In fact, she was quite able to wobble off home for another picture, declaring in tones of tremulous anger that she would transport somebody or another to morn if they didn't saddle for lumber that they'd done her. Twitchell and Enoch were reckless of all this rout at the lane end, and after they'd got the half-crown from the landlord, they followed him up to the alehouse door. Twitchell halted on the doorstep, so as to let the landlord get out of hearing. "'How soon will Moon be up, Thinkster? said he to Enoch, looking out at the sky. "'About an hour and a half or so,' replied Enoch. Then Twitchell peeped over his shoulder into the house. The landlord was walking slowly up the lobby, looking at the floor, and jingling the money in his pocket, and casting up in his mind whether he had not been a fool in meddling with this jackass business. Stop a minute, said Twitchell, laying his hands upon Enoch's shoulder. I want a word with thou as soon as he's gone. And he looked slyly around him. But seeing that the landlord had entered the bar, he pointed towards him with his thumb and whispered to Enoch, Soured again, soured again, replied Enoch, rubbing his hands, soured again, and money drawn. Now then, our lad, 
said Twitchell, laying his hand upon Enoch's shoulder and pointing with his forefinger in a monetary way. We cannot cheap, or else he'll find us out. So keep that blethering tongue of thine between thy teeth. Bother knowing about my tongue, replied Enoch in an indignant tone. Just think I cannot keep a secret as well as they. Gone a red loud waiter, thinks her. Where's that beef? It's here, replied Enoch sulkily, pulling the piece of brisket from under his coat. I took it out at Panya while Rip were rubbing Jackass's leg. That's right, said Twitchell. Keep it out of seat. We'll have a supper off that tonight. Agreed on, answered Enoch, whipping it under his coat again. I thought about that a good bit, said, but it won't wish in. The nose rip let it fall into ditch when dog ye out of me. Let's tack it to pump then, said Twitchell. Agreed on again, replied Enoch. Owd, said Twitchell. Stop there a minute. And he went up to the door of the bar and told the landlord that they should be in again in a few minutes. They were going about a bit of beef. They just crept up to the pump in the backyard when Rip came out from the stable where he'd been foddering Dimple, and as soon as he saw the two figures gliding about in the dark, he called out, Hello, who's there? Is that thee, Rip? said Twitchell in a low whisper. It's no else, replied Rip. Is that you, lads? I say, the beef's gone out of young pannier. How thy din, Wilker? The beef's here. We're bound to wash it. Keep the een up on that back door. What are you for, wait, lads? whispered Rip. We're bound to eat it if we in luck, old mum, replied Twitchell, working the pump handle as quickly as possible, while Enoch twisted the lump of brisket about in the stream. Right, to Ralu, cried Rip, clapping his hands and twirling round like a Morris dancer. I'll to Ralu thee with me clog, if that doesn't make a less din, said Twitchell, stopping the pump. Off with thou in Teth house. And keep jamming tall, told me and done, and done a let on now. All right, replied Rip, and he whisked out at the yard door, and then went round and walked in at the front and up to the bar, with his hands in his pocket, looking as innocent as if he'd not been born above three quarters of an hour. Well, Rip, said the landlord, as to put the jackass up. Aye, it's all right, I give it a bit of summit to eat. Where's Enoch and old Twitch? They've gone out for a bit of beef. They'll be back in a two, three minutes. Oh, they're here now. See thou, continued he, pointing to the door, as Enoch came whistling in, followed by Twitchell, with the beef in his hands. Now then, lads, cried Rip, turning round and winking at Enoch, what are you for now? We haven't been getting a bit of beef, replied Twitchell. Here, Jem, continued he, turning to the landlord, and handing the brisket to him. Tell Betty to put that into the pon first thing, Wilka, and we's want a two, three potatoes, that knows. I'll see to it, said Jem, taking the beef from him. And I say, Jem, well, let's have a leet in that back room, Wilta. Well, and don't let nobody come in bout we send em for em. We in a bit of a job to saddle amongst ourselves, does ye? Ah, ye. In with you, replied the landlord, pushing them gently before him towards the room. In with you, it is let up. In with you, I'll see to it. Here, Betty, said he, looking in at the kitchen door, and giving the beef to his wife. Pop that into the pan for these chaps, as soon as to can, and let them have plenty of potatoes to it. Now then, continued he, following them to the door of the room. You and be as right as a ribbon here, if you and keep the door shut. Snug as a mouse nest, said Enoch, looking round, and chuckling as they went lounging in one after the other. Snug as a mouse nest, by the mass. Tack that to the chair, Rip. And I say, Jem, well, bring a quart to start with. A quart, cried Twitchell. What's a quart? Let's have half a gallon. And dust ye warm it and sweeten it, and put a shillings worth of rum into it. I'll stomp rum. Well, 
And I say, Jam, now then, just think how Droddle will be a womb. He's sure to be. It's known so many minutes and he laughed here. Well, send in and tell him he's wanted. I'll see to it, replied the landlord as he went out, closing the door behind him. I think we do now, said Twitchell, giving a side glance at the door after the landlord had gone out. Let's draw up. By guy, lads, I'm fain to see ya. It's money a week since we had a bit of a do together. Owd, said Rip, owd, till he's brought yon stuff in. In a minute or two the door was opened again and the landlord re-entered with the ale and rum. Now, lads, said he, setting the picture down upon the table. There it is. I've sent for old Roddle. He'll come as soon as he's had his porridge. I brought your jill pot to sup out on. I guess it'll do. Do? Aye, answered Enoch. Fill up and let's have out. I'm as dry as soot. I'll tell you what, lads. It'll be a bonny concern if yon dog that's better me turns out to be mad, win it? Well, come, here's luck a piece. Standing upon his legs, he emptied the pot without taking breath. And then he broke into song when his face turned towards the ceiling and waving the empty pot to the tune. Come, landlord, fill the flowing bowl until it does run over. For this night we'll merry be, tomorrow we'll be sober. Filling the pot again and handing it to Twitchell, he said, Here, Twitch, tack out, that's a good chap when all's said and done. Give me thy hand, old dog. There's many a bigger fool o' thee, old mon. I say, lads, to order, I propose that our twitch takes cheer. Those that's not again it, let him put their hand up. Now, rip, up without, told it all. There's nobody's not again it, seemingly. Get up and let him have that arm cheer. Now, old bread, continued he, turning to twitch him. That the commander of this meeting tack hold of thy job, and I can do it like a mon. Get up, Rip, and let him come. Well, replied Twitchell, rising slowly from his seat and scratching his head, I'm not much at this mack of work, but as you and chosen met, I reckon, as I to do as well as I can. And as he went and sat down in the armchair, the landlord peeped in and said, We're a new Colin. No, said Enoch. Here, Jem, continued he, pointing to Twitchell. We have made thou lad into chairman. Han you? replied the landlord. Aye, back th' mass, some we, continued Enoch, springing to his legs with a jill pot in his hand and crying out, Tune up, lads. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow, which nobbery can deny. Hip, 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 hooray! Again, hooray, again, hooray! Another for wife, hooray! Another for children, hooray! Another for that at they're bound to have. Hooray! Switchell got up and sang and cheered with the rest seemingly quite unconscious that he was the subject of the uproar, and as they sat down again he clapped his hands with the rest and cried out, Ear, ear, ear! Now Twitch, old lad, cried Enoch, get up! Well, lads, said Twitchell, rising slowly from his seat and fondling the jill pot full of ale and rum which he held in his hand, as you and put me in for chair, I guess, as be like to do some or another, or some mat, but you and take it as it leaks, you know, and for I'm not at this job. Hear him, said Enoch, slapping the table. Order, cried Rip, jumping to his feet, to order, while he's done speaking. Well, replied Enoch, what I have to say is as thus, how thy dinner teller, cried Rip, jumping up. Doesn't see the chairman stunning in his legs there. All right, replied Enoch, sitting down again. All right. I'll be to order on a minute. Hear him, hear him, hear him. 
Blaze away, old lad, and get it o'er. Well, now then, said Twitchell, still standing upon his legs. Are you getting settled? The meeting unanimously cried out, Go on, old dog. Well, then, said Twitchell, afore we go on any fur, let's bottle. Here, here, replied the meeting. Well, come, lads, said Twitchell, raising his glass. As it's a bit of an outside do, wheels, I'll give you a toast. Here, here, here. Here's wishing a good may leap on us all, and everybody else, and me and all among the root. Come, continued he, lifting the pot to his lips. Do, replied the meeting, following his example. Thou art bound to do good work, Twitch, cried Enoch, slapping the table again. Go on, old mon. Well, continued Twitchell, being as we're put that door to Enoch. I will, old lad, said Enoch, jumping up and closing the door. And then the chairman went on. Well, lads, being as we're no but three on us, what I have to say is as this, let's be comfortable. I see no occasion for nobody putting themselves about or not, as long as they do him well. Young beef will be ready afore long, and as far as that picture goes, why, as soon as it's empty, we can get the landlord to put a sop more into it. But as for beef, you know, and it belongs no one of us, if everybody had their rates. But we can see fur on about that. Enoch, let's suck. Hear him, cried Enoch, filling the jill pot. The chairman drank it off and then went on. Well, lads, as you and my mick chairman of this do, all that I have to say is, I have not much again nobody, no but myself, and four or five more at same map, and I've been thinking of letting those off and all, in a bit. But when done, one corner like everybody in the world, same as they like in anybody else. Can they act them as like? Well, but as I said afore, I dunna want to hurt nobody. No, young poor devil, that we ain't left in cloth neither, not I. What? We're all Billy Butterworth children, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Here, here, cried the meeting. Well then, continued the chairman. Being as such, I don't know like putting upon nobody, for if I'm on tell you truth, lads, I'm no impartial to being put on myself, and that's where it is. But never mind, all things as but a time, as saying is, and do as we will, we's neither be here, nor there, nor nowhere else, not so devilish long, so let's be comfortable and do as well as we can, I mun it. And then, I'll tell you what, as far as a fool goes, I could fit you up to a year. What says thou, Rip? Nay, speak for thyself, replied Rip. Speak for thyself. Nay, I'm no one talking about thee, old man, continued the chairman. But as for that, fools are no one up worse mack of folk in this world. Are they acting as like? Here, here, cried Rip. Clapping his hands, go it, Twitch. He that a made a rare tawny, owd dog, get forward without. I'll stung Godfather for the next child. If I dunna, I'll go to say. To order, cried Enoch, slapping the table. To order. To order thyself, replied Rip, sitting down again. That makes more din nor old root. Go on, Twitch. Well, as I was saying about foos, Where's the monarch can lay his hand on his singlet and say that he never were a fool? Why, if he does say so, I say that he knows not what things belongs. And so, being as that, what I propose is that we let an young lad off as easy as we can, that after we had had a bit of supper and such like. Now then, Twitch, said Enoch, that running soft again. To order, replied Rip. I'll tap thee a top at yet if thou speak another word. Well, continued the chairman, I say dunna let's be hard upon nobbery, 
Life's nubbut like the snuffed of a candle, as the saying is. Oh, Enoch, hast a yeard about Owd Wisp? No, the old lad tight tore about ten o'clock this forenoon. Nay, sure, is he gone? What did he de on? Oh, he did quite natural. They never had no doctor to him. I knows he's very near ninety. He went off at the end of all, just like a child falling asleep in its cather. Aye, aye, and is thou lad of womb then at last? Aye, his daughter told me at dinner time, who sit bit bedside tenting him about nine o'clock this forenoon, and who saddled his pillar for him and asked him how he felt. And he told her that he held not but want a rest. And then he turned his head quietly on one side with his bitter thund under his cheek, and he said, I feel as if I could sleep now, Mary. So who took him up, and who crept out and made him some gruel, and when who come back with it, who looked to see how he were getting on, his cheek lay on his hand just same, and his ear was shut like a Bible, when service is over. Mary thought it a good sign, so who set her quietly down again, back bedside, to wait till he wacken. But who met her waited long? Thou lad had dozed off into another world, like a cinder cooling at bottom at fire grate in neat-teen. Poor old wisp, said Rip, blowing his nose. We ain't sent thend on him, then. He were one at Better and the chaps as owd as he were. Well then, continued Twitch, seeing that such like things as these are turning up every day, and there's no one living knows where he may be by ten morn at noon, I'll be a shilling towards the beef that we ain't taken off young lad. Thou will, cried Enoch, give me thy aunt, I'll be another. Well, come lads, said Rick, jump into his feet. I'm no one bound to be licked in a right thing. Nantman sought me a brass that I have about me rags, but you're welcome to it. Well done, Rip, our bread, cried Enoch. Come, tune up, lads. Bravo, bravo, very well sung, jolly companions, every one. But I say, lads, continued Enoch, we are not giving brass to neat. Let's that spree out first. I can send you up to his wife by little Billy Crawshaw in morning. He has to go to Witter for some rubbing bottle. I'm willing, said Rip. Agreed on then, said the chairman, who was still on his legs. And now, lads, as we're all mates together, here's wishing that we may every one of us pull through to the end as well as we come. And with that, if you in a mind, I'll drop it and sit down, for I've not no more to say, I know em. Here, 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 cried Enoch, all right up to now. Sit thou down, I guess we mun have things full again, mun away. Agreed em, said Rip. Enoch knocked upon the table, and when the landlord came in, he handed the pitcher to him and said, Jem, bring us another half gallon at same mac. We had no one at concert. Pitch yet. Well, come, lads, said Twitchell. Draw up and give us a song. Sing one, they sell, replied Enoch. There ain't a man in Lancashire can sing jockey to fair better than they. Aye, but I ain't getting my breath yet, man, answered Twitchell. Come, said Enoch. I'll sing you one. Here, here, replied Rip. What art I bound to sing, Enoch? A brand new one. Never was sung afore. It's called Tum Rindle. Brassed off, then, cried Twitchell, and Enoch struck up a new ditty to the tune of Robin Thompson Smithy. But seeing as he couldn't really sing and he didn't know the tune, it went a bit like this. Tum Rundle up for the chimbley nook as the winter sun was sinking. I'm tired of cowering near in smoke and wasting time in thinking. It frets me fat and racks me brew, it sets me head a stewing. I'm on the wooden day a fool, man up and start a doing. 
and so the song went on for numerous verses, which I will not bore the reader with. Well done, Enoch, old lad, said Rick, and in the jill pot to him. Here, wet thy whistle. Bravo, bravo, very well sung, jolly companions, every one. Here, 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 cried Rick and Enoch, thumping the table. Come, said Enoch, taking up the picture. We am bottle once round again, and then I'll give you a bit of a ditty. Hush, bite mass, yon's our roddle coming. Draw up. The clank and trail of a pair of slack clogs in the lobby told the approach of old Roddle the weaver. His tall figure was bending under a load of years. He was now only the shrunken relic of a very strong man, and his well-worn fustian clothing had far out thriven his body. He had long begun to grow down brew like a cow tail, but the winter of life had found him sound at the core. Many a long year had passed away since he used to leap from his looms at the sound of the hunting horn and follow the dogs all day over the hills of Spotland. But fire enough smouldered at the centre of that old compound of bone and whipcord to make his ten toes tingle when he heard the huntsman's horn. The snowfall of time lay white upon his head, but the quiet glow of a cheerful sunset lingered upon the furrowed slopes of that fine old aquiline face. Roddle was a great favourite in the village. In fact, he was a kind of horn lantern to the whole hamlet, for from his youth up he had read with avidity the few books that had fallen into his way, and his stores of information were the subject of much mysterious comment among his simple neighbours. He was the soul of fireside fun withal, and it made him up chin fain to join in the merry makings of the village. No wonder that he was popular. The old man's cottage was near the alehouse, and he came in bareheaded with his apron on, and a long pipe in his mouth. Now then, Jem, said he, looking at the bar, what has to a gate? In there, replied the landlord, pointing to the back room. Go forward, some old mates. The moment he showed himself in the doorway, Enoch sprang to his feet and cried, Is he up? Come in, old lad. The old man stood in the doorway a minute, looking quietly around. Aye, aye, said he. There's a smart lot here. Toe bites as I call these. Well, and what are you a foot, lads? Continued he, walking slowly forward. He roddle, said Enoch. That's as welcome as two fiddlers. Come in and cower thou down. Rip, get up and let him have that cheer. Here, tack out and swelt dust out of thy neck. Well, replied Roddle, I'll just taste with ye. Come. Do, replied the company. The old man emptied the pot at three drinks, and then, setting it down upon the table, he said, Well, what on you a gate? Come out with it. Hush, said Twitchell, looking round. Put that door to. Enoch closed the door, and then they drew their chairs together, and he told Roddle the whole story about Ben sending the jackass up to the mill chamber, and how they had let it down again at the back, and driven it up into the village and pawned it with the landlord for half a crown. The room rang with merriment, and the old man threw himself back in his chair, and laughed till the father's tooth in his head was visible. But as the fun subsided, Roddle gradually grew thoughtful, and pushing the tobacco into his pipe with his little finger, he said, I'll tell you what, lads, you munna do too hard at him. He's not much to stir on, hasn't Ben, and he comes of a decent breed. Besides, young wife of his has fund him a lot of little childer, so let him leap as softly as you can. Here, here, replied Twitchell. That's what I say. We want to know but a bit of my look out on him. There'll be no war for what we's do at him, thou see. But I'll tell thou what, Roddle. The mech slip down to mill and bring him up here. I dare say the poor devil's prowling about yon in dark yet. 
he'll not know thee. The moon'll be up in about an hour or so. Dunna bring him in here, tuck him into tap room, and dunna let on at the nose about the job now. We mun let thou lad have a bite o' yon beef of his. What sayin' ye lads, is he to go? Aye, replied Enoch. Off with our rod old lad, and dunna be long. The beef'll be ready in about half an hour. Come, I'll shop it, said the old weaver, knocking the ashes out of his pipe and walking towards the door. By mass, Roddle, said Enoch, that's as cant as a kitlin yet. Cant or not cant, I'll shop this job for you, you and see, replied Roddle as he closed the door upon the merry prile of conspirators. As the old man went thoughtfully down the lobby, a little lad came in at the front door with a basket on his arm. Is he Nicker Swivers here? inquired the lad. Aye, replied Roddle. What has to get un? Me father sent me with sheep's head and a pluck and liver that he bought at dinner time. He said they were to be laughed here for him. All right, said Roddle, taking them out of the basket. Off with thou. I'll look after it. As soon as the lad was gone, Roddle walked quietly out at the front door and then round to the stable in the backyard, and putting the meat into Dimple's pannier, he said, Now then, Ben, old lad, thou's our summit to the dinner to morn, if that's na beef. And then off he went to find poor Ben in the clough, chuckling with delight at the lucky turn the frolic had taken.